Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hotline League. I am live in Berlin right now. It's 4.30 a.m. We've had some technical issues for the last half hour, but we finally got them going. Apologies if we have any more hiccups. It's always the, the difficulty of doing a show out of a hotel and broadcasting it live onto two different platforms. Regardless, uh, I am uh, just on, <laughs> in between day one and day two of crazy Swiss asset day stages uh, stuff where I'm at the studio I have flown from the LCS studio to participate in coverage from the LEC studio. Wow, this is worlds, baby. <laughs> Let me go ahead and introduce my co-host, Cubby. Cubby, how's it going? I'm good. Uh, I, I enjoyed watching the plans and uh, excited to talk about that and then what we got coming up for Swiss where you know the true tournament kind of starts. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Uh, well, I guess I'm not excited about talking about plans because of... Some unfortunate things. I've got a, I've got a beef to pick with you, Covey. But first, I need to introduce our sponsors for the episode. Of course, we have NZXT, who's with us throughout the year. Appreciate NZXT so much for uh, supporting us with their desktop PCs uh, and their components. Go check them out. I'm bringing an NZXT headset right now. Uh, it's fun to have that while I'm on the road. You can use the link to check out their stuff and use code Travis5 while you're there. Next up, we have Price Picks, who is sponsoring all of our world's coverage. Uh, really appreciate Price Picks. They are such a fun way to engage with worlds. You can use the link in the description and use code Travis. Uh, we'll be talking about them, of course, later on. But yeah, please use code Travis when you sign up. It is very, very helpful uh, when you, you folks sign up and make your first time deposit. Uh, and then finally, last but not least, very, very exciting. We're joined by Pagoda for our world's hotline link episodes which is really cool we've been talking to pagoda throughout the year and uh, we were able to make this work uh, so yes you might not be seeing them on the lcs because the lcs is on hiatus right now while we're at worlds but you get to continue to see them on your favorite lcs coverage show not the dive no hotline league so we're going to talk about them more later on uh, but really appreciate pagoda uh sponsoring the show all right let's get into this first off uh folks saying the that we're having audio issues the audio issues is probably from the microphone that's right in front of me um so cubby i remember you mm -hmm. and yeah papa smithy yeah i was on the show and i said i am worried about 100 thieves i don't know if they'll be able to make it out of plans and both mm -hmm. of you guys were like ah oh, it's the easiest play it's ever. They're definitely making it out. And they I did was have like, the easiest draw. And I was like, okay, these two people are much smarter than I am when it comes to League of Legends uh, analysis and all that. And so I said to myself, ah, I'll just trust these guys, even though I am skeptical. And Cubby, Planes is now over. Is this happening? It, it, it is is what happening? Is Hunter Thieves out? Yeah, they're they're out. Sorry, yeah, sorry. We I lost you there for a sec. Um, you know, I, I would like to say the one caveat that we did give is that they did draw the easiest side of the bracket, which was true. And then they lost, and then they got the hard side of the bracket. Uh and it was ugly on the way out, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. That was uh, I like I said, I I said earlier, I was planning on wearing my 100 Thieves jersey. You know, I, I point out my outfits before the day. You know, jokes aside, uh, yeah, I I felt bad. I, I I couldn't wear it today. It was a bummer. I had, I had to wear a winning team's jersey, unfortunately. So, um, but yeah. And that's why you are wearing R7's jersey. <laughs> yeah, won. of course. You know, tune, uh, tune in the YouTube just to find out. Um yeah, well, I mean, R7 didn't win either. Uh, on the bright side, you know, at least we got an America's team out. Yeah. It's the, it's the future, Travis. Yeah, I've heard that that is a little bit of the conversation behind the scenes. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it is unfortunate that Riot has not pushed the America's narrative more going into this because, like, I think plans did play out in a very America's conversation fashion where we had the LADAM team beating North America or the Northern Conference or whatever you want to call it and then Brazil getting through so it just 
it's the narratives are definitely there, but like nobody's really talking about them because obviously America's has not kicked off yet. So it is kind of a funny situation, um, but also a sad situation. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Besides that, Travis. But before we get into things, I, I've been going through some shows. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we should talk about how and I and I had a, a a crazy long flight. I guess we can we can catch up a little bit as we tend to do. We'll try to keep it shorter since we're a little yeah. bit behind on the on what, the start of the show. But. What what did you end up watching, Travis? So Any, I watched. Fun? I binged all of season three of Only Murders in the Building, which I have not watched in a couple of years, and I really really enjoyed it. Uh, I got on my KLM flight, for which I had pre ordered Wi Fi through their website, and. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. The Wi-Fi is not connecting it before the flight took off. And I was like, maybe it's one of those things where the Wi-Fi only turns on once we're in the air. It was suspicious. And then sure enough, as soon as we got into the air, they were like, oh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Wi-Fi won't be functioning for this entire flight. And so I went, oh, no. Oh, no. And thankfully, I had downloaded all of uh, Season 3 to my tablet, so I was able to watch that. And uh, I really liked it. It was good, but that was the only thing I liked about that flight. Anyway, Cubby, what have you been watching? Uh, I gotta say, I, I really, I really recommend the Penguin. Uh, the first two episodes have been fantastic. If anyone's looking for something fun, I think it's the currently the third most watched uh, show on HBO. Uh, and yeah, it's it's actually like really good. Uh, and I also wrapped up the Mr. McMahon documentary on Netflix. Kind of go. I, I'm not a wrestling fan, but uh, like I've always found that interesting, just because it's very. I, I mean, wrestling in like American like is very involved in like American culture, and I mean McMahon built that thing by himself, and he's obviously very controversial. And it was a pretty good documentary. I like, it, it, it. It's only six episodes. It was a entertaining watch. Like they talked to anyone and everyone uh, that was involved. Um, but yeah, the, the doc did dodge a lot, but it's because that McMahon just kind of canceled his interviews after like the latest controversies came up. Um, but it was still really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. I had not heard of that. So that's interesting to hear. And the Batman stuff, there's so, or the penguin stuff, there's so much, uh, there's ads all over Berlin for it. So it's good. I, it, the first, like Colin Farrell is fan. I mean, he's a great actor, but it, like the first two episodes are actually really good. Like yep. I've, I've, I really enjoyed the first two episodes. Uh, well, I guess one of the things that I can talk about a little bit is that I've been at the LEC studio. Um, so it, as I said, it's 4.30 in yeah. the morning here, but yesterday I spent almost the whole day at the LEC studio, which is kind of in the bum, bumfuck nowhere, I believe. Is there a technical term for it? You have to take a cab 45 minutes out of town for it. And before all the... European player, people come in and start screaming at me about taking a cab instead of using public transit. Apparently, they're doing a bunch of work on the train system. So, all the people that were here were like, Yeah, you got to take an Uber, I guess, because it's just screwed. So, yeah, I've been doing that. But it was really fun. Uh, it's the first time that I've been at the LEC studio since it got remodeled a while ago. And it looks really impressive, I must say. Uh, LCS and LEC go in kind of different directions in terms of what they want to do with the studio. The LEC studio actually reminds me a lot of the LCK arena. Um, LCK does like full in the round, which is I think a little nicer, but I think, I think it's so cool. Yeah. I think it's so cool. Like the circle seating. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is really cool, but the LC, the LEC still does a pretty good job of doing that while it's like split in half. And I will say that I think it has considerably less seating than the LCS. At least that's what it looks like when I was in there uh, yesterday. But yeah, it is it is a pretty cool space. They, they did it. It's way better than the last time that I was here many years ago. So I really like that. And I've been talking to pro players and stuff. I do think that behind the scenes, at least based off one conversation I had with a pro, uh, Team Liquid seems to be the bigger threat in uh, the than FlyQuest. So, uh, I don't know if that's going to tailor that, anyone's that's expectations. Too, that's not too surprising. I mean, like, even, I mean, TL, they were the better team for the vast majority of the year, or um, the split, I should say. Like, pretty much since they won, like, TL has been the better team, and I do think that TL has also always been the better scrim team. So, I'm not too surprised by that. 
Okay, I've been told that my mic is clipping a ton, so let me know if this is any better. I'm borrowing this mic from a friend, uh, so hopefully this is hopefully we can make this work. Kobe, are you hearing much of that? Uh, yeah, you've been clipping here and there. I wasn't sure if it was just Discord of the stream. It seems like okay. when you're close, though, it's fine. Okay, well, we will just do we'll just do this then. I just I'm gonna have like a hunchback situation. Maybe I can pick this up and just talk. Okay. Uh, so, oh, people are suggesting it might also just be the, the internet, so I'm not sure. Uh, all right. Anyway, yeah, no, it's been really cool to be creating all this content, to be here at Worlds, and uh, again, shout out to the sponsors for making that happen. Well... Do, do you have any interviews that you want to tease or anything that you've got coming up down the pipeline that you're excited about? So with Asset Day, what we do is uh, we do... This is where I try to get all the surprise test stuff because I can get access to a player from every single team, and so mm -hmm. or almost every single team. And so we've been doing, uh, I've been doing surprise test stuff for that. We're doing another one of the skin, the world skin ones, because it, I think that went really well last time. And, and I, I will not wait a year before putting that one out. But yeah, we're going to do part two. And I think it's kind of fun to put them back to back where you have the 2023 pros and the 24 pros all trying to figure that out. Uh, we have an arcane trivia. This arcade is coming out. I thought it'd be really funny to ask pro players arcane trivia questions because. I don't know <laughs> how much how much do pros know much about arcane so yeah, there's a couple different things that i think will be really fun uh, and then we have if you recall last year at worlds we did a uh it, people audio seems to be an internal encoding issue Kobe sounds fine this is travis clipping sorry folks um yeah continue to let me know if there's if there's audio issues oh, i thought holding it might be good ruin internet. i thought holding yeah. it might be better um so the oh the other thing we're doing is we're just asking them a list of, of questions kind of similar to what we did with the pros last year. So for instance, one of the questions that Drew came up with that I really like is like, if you could win Worlds this year, but you would be forced to retire, would you choose to do that instead of being able to continue playing, but be cursed to never win Worlds? Oh. Is that kind of fun? I think it's a fun question. And it's so funny when you ask the pros that because they, they just sort of stutter out, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, wow. That's, oh, I don't know what I'd want to do there. Um, I mean, I don't want to, I, I, would, I would not want to retire, but winning's kind of, kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, either way, let's get into some questions uh, from the, the audience and some takes. Uh, but I guess it's, I should ask if there's anything that I'm forgetting that has happened in the past week besides plans that we need to address. I guess there's not been any um, big trade rumors or anything, right? I've been I'm traveling our, oh, again. I right mean, here. I will say, Travis, you know, I just want to, I, I will tease the offseason is moving here. I don't think that we're ready to talk about anything, but I, I, I know that we're both starting to hear some things on our doorstep, uh, including some official stuff. NRG, they released everyone. Uh, oh, Shopify dropped are up. Fake God. Yes. Yeah. And Tomio. Yeah. Um, and then the I know there was a lot of discussion around the World Song. I, I don't really care about the World Song personally. I like my opinion is I liked it. I don't like the World Song formula. So the fact that Lincoln Park got to do their own thing, like it's unique to them. I actually liked a lot. Um, but I I don't really care about the discussion there. I'll be honest. Uh, I'm sorry if I, if people are passionate about it. Um, this is a world where the tagline and the song will not make me like just want to kill, <laughs> like like just die by the end of the tournament, man. Because like I watch everything like it, it, involving all this, you know. So like sometimes it just like it just runs its course on me. But I, I actually like this stuff. So yeah, yeah. I I thought the music video was fine. I forget I forgot that that came out after the last episode. Um, the, the, the video was whatever. Everyone we can talk about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. The art style kind of made people merge together. I really didn't like how often they cut in yeah. the artist. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah. from what I understand, that's kind of what everyone's opinions are. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. It, I think I think it's fine. Uh, I will say there's some rumors that there's some strange, strange stuff going on with Hunter T in their spot in the league. So yes, there are. I have heard that as well. But yeah. I, I can't substantiate those as well. Yeah, I've not. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to actually like, share the rumor? No, or, no. It's just because I no? have not. Okay. 
I have not heard anything definitive enough, but I just wanted to flag it with people as they're like, it's, yeah, it's strange, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those where it's like the rumor is something where like it really feels like it's just fan engineer. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, what if this happened? It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So for I guess the the only reason I mention it is because I know there's like a lot of hundred T fans who were like, oh everything's great and i'm like uh actually it might get complicated i don't know uh, see about i'm very that. curious to see yeah. what ends up happening so um yeah. uh, i didn't i think the other thing is i didn't want to say anything about this until while well, hunter t were still playing because i didn't you know mm -hmm. but yeah so maybe by the next stream we'll have some sort of thing maybe somebody will have figured out all the pieces or we will have figured out all the pieces and we can talk about it or something um yeah, David David Shinock somewhere is gonna make a TikTok and be like, ah. But I I would imagine he's at least heard some rumors too. All right, um, let's let's get into the takes. Do we have takes ready to go? Yeah, we got three in, in the tank. Um, and yeah, we'll see from there. Uh, I mean, we still need some more takes. So if you guys are interested in dropping a take, discord.gg slash Travis. Uh, just the two of us today, but uh, it kind of allows for us to expand on some more stuff. Uh, and yeah, if you guys want to hop in, um, feel free to hop in. So yeah, uh, that said, discord.gg slash Travis, drop a take at me, at Cubby, and we can go from there. I'll play into the waiting room and then we'll... Uh, drag you on in. And with that said, Travis, I'm ready to get hop into the first uh, first call. One second. I am going to... We're going to plan it? Tell, tell me if this audio is better, uh, Twitch chat and, oh, okay. and YouTube chat. Um, or if this is painful. Hopefully it's fine. I'm seeing no, no, yes, yes, low ladder. It doesn't clip. It doesn't it's clip. painful. Somebody says it's painful. Louder, but no static. I mean, I can turn it down. Is this, uh, do we, do, are we fine with this? Okay. We're just going to use this then. Um, okay. Oh, that was loud. Okay. Hopefully this is fine. Um, so, yeah, I think we should be good to go, Cubby. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, sorry uh, for... That's it. Okay, I'm going to go grab the first one. Okay, Also, cool. uh, Do you want to read out the subs? I know that we don't have them appearing today, but... Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, folks, we were trying to get the subs to show on stream, and we were having issues with that. So um, I will just be reading this out. Thank you to everybody. We, we are pretty low on, on subs right now, uh, which is fine. Um, I think it's just because we've had a pretty big break. But if you have a prime sub sitting around that's the only reason i mention it is uh some folks sometimes have a prime sub sitting around uh we got fishy thank you for the resub boba cola for the 85 months uh hasumi thank you for the resub uh, cosmo caps 10 months man bear pig for seven robert max 28 teddy man guy halamas prime happy's happy's jace jaden and george zulu for the 53 Simon with the 47. Thank you, everybody. Over on YouTube, we have nothing. You YouTube folks. T-Bone is here. T-Bone, where are you calling from? Calling from Long Island. Calling from Long Island. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, so my take is that the world's format next year is just completely inferior to this year's format and last year's format. Uh, and to those who don't know the changes that are happening... So they're essentially getting rid of play-ins. They technically still have a play-in, um, but to, to break it down, uh, because of the consolidations between the Pacific Leagues, so there's the Asia-Pacific League now, which is LJL, um, Vietnam's region, I can't remember the acronym for it, and uh, whatever, is it PCS? I, I can't even remember. It, but they, they just changed to, yeah, it's... Yeah, they're, like, they're, they're, yeah they're, they consolidated... They yeah, they consolidated those three into one region. So yeah. those teams get three, or uh, that region gets three teams at Worlds now. The Americas get three teams at Worlds, and they're all in group stage now. So all of those five, re or all of the five regions now, just have three teams in uh, 
groups, I guess, because they're doing Swiss format. And the one plane they still have is that uh, if you do the math, three times five is 15. You need 16 teams. And the way that they handle that last 16th team is that it's going to be the fourth seed of the region that wins MSI and the fourth seed of the region that comes in second at MSI or like however they want to quantify that. I'm not sure. Um, the wording is very vague. I don't know if they take into account even this world's or the other international tournament they're having next year. But to me, I think play-ins are cool. I think that this play-in uh, was very uh, indicative of how great play-ins could be. And um, specifically, I have a lot of issues with the Americas region as well. But when you get rid of play-ins, you obviously have to reduce the amount of seeds. And giving North America at maximum only two next year is really going to be harmful to the league itself, in my opinion. I know that there are a lot of thoughts on the Americas League, but just in terms of worlds, it's going to be it's going to suck a lot. If you are one of the big team fans in LCS and your team plays third so they couldn't go, or even then, um, if your team plays second and they lost to uh, South America's second best team, and those issues are only created because they're getting rid of play-ins. If they didn't have to ar uh, arbitrarily decrease the amount of teams going to Worlds, we wouldn't have this problem. So that's why I think it's worse. The only benefit of it is that since you only have to invite 17 teams in total, that's probably a lot cheaper, a lot fewer matches. But again, I like play-ins. Play-ins are fun. So that's my take. I okay. I think this take would hold more water if you were make if you called it to last week's show. Because so. well, uh, I think a, a central thesis of your take is that it's really unfortunate for the LCS that we only get to send two teams. And I think a lot of people were frustrated that like Brazil was taking one of these spots from us. Uh, however, based off playing results, it's hard to justify LCS needing three seeds, I guess. And and I, I shall caveat that by saying like, I don't think that you can use a sample size of one. So personally, yeah, I, I think say you can't really make a, an argument off that off anecdote, considering that NA typically gets their third seed out of play ins. And also play ins also serves the function of the non LCK non LPL uh, regions of actually having some competition. Like the, the games that you see in play ins that are from the like LEC LCS and minor region teams are much more competitive than group stages of the uh, LCK LPL verse the the western regions as well and we're kind uh, of losing that too i mean yeah but also like if that's the case like those teams just aren't going to win the tournament in the first place right so well, yeah, i totally agree but like yeah. the, the reason we have worlds is not like if, if we were only trying to figure out what the best team in the world was for the world's tournament we would probably only invite the top four seeds of lck and the top four seeds of lpl and go from there we wouldn't invite any western uh, seeds i mean I, I mean, I, that's, I, that's I, I wouldn't agree with that. I would add more teams from those regions, but I would still like you can't I mean, have a world that, like six LCK, five LPL, and like maybe G two. I mean, but, yeah. Like, I, if you like actually want to have a tournament where like you are going to take the best teams, then yeah, like you you would still invite the Western teams there. You would still invite the top teams from other regions. You just give them more seeds because like there are legitimately like JDG. Like, if they could have made quarters plus, like, if they're in this tournament, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, that's something where, I mean, I'm curious to see how they're able to use this new power ranking system that they have, if they actually use it for any seating or if it's just going to be there for the cameras. Um, but, I mean, I will say that, like, for me, this plans, I, I mean, I, I do VOD reviews on my streams, like, right, for, like, all the NA uh, games for NACL and LCS. I've yet to VOD review these playing games. Like I, I will agree, these a lot of these games were gross. Like I, like for me, this is the one time where I can actually be a league purist because it's not my job to cast the games. Because the reason I go over all those games is if I'm going to talk about it, I feel like it's my job to at least go over the games and make it public for everyone else. But like this time around, like I, there were very few games that I found entertaining, and or I should say, good games and plans. There were many games that I found entertaining, but I don't want to like go over those again because like. What am I, I going to talk about for, for pain versus R7 game three? Um, I, I could spend an hour talking about like how each team messed up. For me, 
I, I, I don't think that plans is necessary to make Worlds super fun. I want to have more competitive games among the top teams. Like, if I was going to criticize the Worlds format at all next year, it'd be that they're keeping the same format for Swiss on, and that uh, you will get some competitive games, but some of the teams that would be eliminated in plans uh, are now going to make it in the Swiss and will only have three games. Like, they, they're only going to have what, two best of ones and a best of three? And that's it. And like, for me, that uh, that kind of sucks. Like, I, I feel like having more games among all uh, teams, like, if I were to change the format at all, like, that's the route that I would go for. Uh, so I'm, you're just not in favor of Swiss at all, then? Or am I just misunderstanding you? I am. I just, I wish it was... Okay. Um, I, I hope they do, like, all best of threes next year. Or, like... So if you were to have like a dream you format, you don't yeah. have to come up with one off the top of your head. I don't, you, you wouldn't include a play-ins type structure in it or? Uh, no, my dream format is literally what Dota 2 does for the international. Uh, mm -hmm. was the old one. It was when they had 18 teams and they would do two groups and do a round robin. Uh, and then that decided the seating. So if you were in the top four of your group, you would have two lives in the bracket. If you were in the bottom four, of, or if you were bottom one of the group, you were eliminated and did not make it to bracket stage. And if you were bottom uh, like five through eight in your group, then you would have one life in the bracket. And that was how they decided their seating, is by having a giant-ass group stage where you played a ton of games. It's like the least amount of games that uh, you got. I think they did best of twos as well. So you got to play each side once, which is the best way to do league, uh, if in case one side is overpowered which i would say blue side is stronger on this patch especially but that it, for me was the fairest way to actually do the tournament that would be my dream format for me you're guaranteed a minimum of 18 games by the way for that's me great. i yeah one i i think that's really i like that idea could be in a world where you are like okay we've invited all these teams to seattle and we're just going to do the whole thing out of seattle and it will be sort of done um but and I, I also think that that format makes more sense in a world where you have not been doing, like, whenever the only thing you're really doing is TI. Uh, but the fact that they do, like, all the domestic leagues and everything, that, that goes all in. Like, I think I think there are ways where you don't need to do this massive round robin to, like, figure out how to seed everybody. Uh, even though I agree that that is a pretty funny, or fun and entertaining format. Mm -hmm. I... Look, for a long time, I have not been a fan of plans. I have been a fan of the fact that more teams get to come to Worlds. I've been a fan of the fact that the minor regions get to, like, have a, a stage experience for Worlds. But plans, I think, like, as an entertainment product, I think plans does some weird stuff to Worlds where we, and we've talked about this for years on this show, you tell everybody Worlds is starting. But oh, it's but it's like plans, and all the best teams aren't playing yet, and Riot ends up in this weird, awkward situation where they're like both promoting world starting and kind of not promoting world starting because they, you you get the feeling that they never really wanted to have to to plans. They never it's never felt like it's truly been part of the main event, and so I have long felt as though like plans as a product was not. A really good thing uh i guess is the best way to put it that being said uh i've always advocated for its existence because i do want it to be a situation where uh every region gets a chance to play on stage at worlds and plan seems like a necessary evil to accomplish that uh, but now that there are not going to be minor regions <laughs> anymore, or wild cards well, are, or whatever, it's just too. yeah. Well, I mean, from from like a um, oh, thank you for the subs, Evil Trenton. Uh, from a like major, I mean, we're basically merging all the the minor regions into like the major ones, right? And so, like from a yeah. world's perspective, there is no such thing as a minor region. Um, you're not going to have like a major region first minor region type thing. And so in that world, I think it makes sense for plans to go away. And this is also makes sense within the world or within the space of Riot wanting to cut a bunch of costs around everything. Um, 
not to say that I'm ever going to be like, yeah, right, it should cut costs or whatever, but understanding that they need to because of the reality that we live in, I think this is perhaps the best solution. I don't like the way that North America has lost a spot at Worlds. Um, and I agree that, like, hey, one of the... Like, we've had one year where this has gone wrong compared to all the other years. But it is... It's just really rough to make that argument right now, I feel like. Like, it's just really... I, I don't know what you do. I guess you could have argued that you do some sort of battle between Brazil and the LCS for that final spot. But I also understand that it is really difficult to decide to just have potentially no Brazilian presence at all at Worlds. So... I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not happy about it. I don't think this is good. I agree that it is like we're worse off with next year's world's format than we are with this year's. I also just think that this was somewhat inevitable given uh, what plans was, and also with like the consolidation that we're seeing everywhere. Hey yeah. Travis, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. God forbid next summer the second L or the second North Conference team loses to the second south conference team and na only sends one team to worlds do you think that will be kind of like the death blow to north american league of legends oh do i think it will be the death blow no but i do think it will continue to erode the league significantly I mean, I I don't feel as though Riot is going to be able to successfully create a fandom around the North and South Conference. Like, I, it is hard to imagine that the average LCS fan this year, next year, will be cheering for the South Conference teams at Worlds. And so I think, you know, the, the premise for Riot should be, or it would have been, I think, oh, well, we're all one league. <laughs> and so when we send two South Conference teams, yeah, maybe they're not your North Conference teams, but you're still the Americas fan, right? And so you're going to cheer for these Americas teams. I don't think that that will work. And so I think, to your point, that will just feel really, really bad. And you will have a lot of people who legitimately step back from watching league and their region uh if that ends up yeah. happening but i, I do want to yeah. add oh so, sorry good no, go sorry no sorry oh i want to add it depends on how the new teams can connect with the audience because the teams are going to be challenged with having to communicate to an english portuguese and spanish audience like i mean personally like a psg's twitter is hilarious if you go scroll through like some of the stuff they've been posting I, like if, if you have these new teams that do join the north conference like do join the south conference and really try and cash in on connecting with the new audience that they're able to connect with i, I do think that that will help I, I could see myself you know i was kind of rooting for pain because pain won the tier two americas tournament and then every time they panned to the cb law arena like every one of there is going nuts and i like, shout out to the broadcast too like I tweeted um, after like one of the days, like, hey, it's really cool. We're getting arena shots. Can we pump in the audio? And they ended up doing that for the R7 match, which is awesome. Like, I mean, it, it's hard for me to like not see fandom and connect with that. I, I, I mean, I'm not rooting for them in the fact that like I want them to win over my NA teams, but that is something I can at least connect with. So I, I don't want to say it's like the death to LCS or uh, like our American teams, but I, I think that the onus is on everyone to connect with the new audiences that they're going to be presented with. And I do want to see teams make a true effort to do that because I could see myself rooting for teams that aren't American based or not even English based if they are good at actually pitching their team to me as an audience. I just have I just no faith this. that they'll do that Cubby <laughs> successfully. All right, that's I think fair. I mean that's, the, the LCS I mean, teams fair. have done a poor job of building fandom within their own region. I now they are going to be tasked with doing it to fans of a different language and culture. Um I, I don't I mean, know. I know I got one person that uh, speaks uh, Portuguese and English, and 
Like I've been pitching him to like a lot of the teams be like, hey, use this individual as a translator, right? Um, I, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying to like make sure like, I mean, I, I can't do much, but like I, it's a huge opportunity for teams. And I, I know that some teams are like seeing this and looking forward about this. And I am hopeful that uh, like you, everyone can kind of boost each other up through this. Uh, even I, I can see why you're skeptical, Travis, and I do agree with you, but I am leaving that door open that I do think I would be shocked if like one team or two teams, like don't really make waves with a audience that isn't going to be the native language they have now. I mean, the, the, <laughs> The problem is, is it seems like there's a lot of resentment to the LCS uh, from the Brazil fans. So it's hard to imagine a world where an LCS team is going to make build fandom in Brazil. Also, if I'm a LCS team owner, you're telling me I now have to spend money on like Portuguese translators and create content for that region in a year where you're also telling me I'm going to get less money than I did previously. Like, I, I just feel like it's unlikely that they end up doing that. Um, and it, let's remember that, like, Riot just decided this unilaterally. It's not like the teams yep. were yep. on board with this. So, like, it's hard to imagine a world where, like, the teams do not feel resentful about the changes that are being made and are not... I don't know. I'm just very skeptical that, like, the LCS side will do it. And I don't think that the Brazilian teams... I mean, maybe they will. I, I don't know. They've obviously done a good job of building fandom in their region, but um, I don't know. I don't know. You were going to say something, Color? Yeah, I was just going to say earlier, we were talking about how there's kind of some like uh, resentment or like cross league or even like how do you get the North American fans to root for the, you know, other uh, for the South conference team at internationals. And to me, I, I wouldn't have an issue with rooting for them if it didn't feel like the LCS has like lost a spot for that to happen. Like I'm somebody who I think like, you know, I, I don't have anything against Brazil, but like in terms of like me watching worlds next year, a lot of my thoughts, and this is not just going to be me thinking this, like, Oh, this could have been C9 here. Oh, this could have been a hundred thieves here instead. Oh, this could have been, whatever team somehow gets back into the league next year. And that's just my biggest issue with the merger. Like conceptually, I don't like it, but again, I would be open to it if it just didn't feel like the LCS had to lose something. And it also seems like Brazil or Brazilian League of Legends fans are kind of in the perspective of like, oh, we are losing something to make this happen. And it just seems to be a marriage that nobody wants. Yeah, I, so, I, I mean, agree with the idea that Riot has given fans no reason to to be excited about this. <laughs> like, if you're an LCS fan, in what world is this, like, good news for you? Um, and seemingly the same goes for, like, Brazilian fans or LADAM fans especially. So, um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that there's... Riot has not given any incentives for fans to, like, cheer uh, for the other side of the league, <laughs> you know? And maybe they will next year. You know, but I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think that just having other side of the league though, and more teams, like I hope I'm hoping for a more engaged fandom. There are more reasons to be fans with, um, like inter region play being existing in the two conferences and promotion relegation being a thing moving forward. I, I am hope I, I know that all this was done just for downsizing, but I am really hoping that it ends up creating more ways for fans to engage that, like that, that is my hope. Yeah, I think um, that, yeah. I, quite, quite frankly, I think that it'll be, because we've been talking about whether or not it makes sense for like an LCS fan to root for like the Americas teams that are not in their part of the conference, I guess. But like, I, on the contrary, I do think there are a lot of reasons for both regions to resent each other and to have a rivalry that way, right? You're forcing these two people into a room together and putting a stick between them and seeing what ends up happening if they're locked in the room together. So... I, uh, I think that that might be a thing, but, uh, you know, we're talking about this all within the context of worlds and I don't, it is hard to me to imagine how America's fans will be rooting for America's teams that are not in their conference at worlds next year, but maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe people will fall in love with these stories and right. will spend a lot of money to create a bunch of content to help bridge the gap between these two regions. Uh, probably not, but yeah. Yowie says, damn, Travis looks like he's dying. <laughs> I, it, you're not a morning person, are you, Travis? 
Hey, caller, anything you want to shout out here at the end? Yeah, you know, I want to shout out. He, I, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but there was this gentleman named Mark Zimmerman. He used to actually uh, co-host this show, and he actually became co- uh, commissioner of the LCS. And he did such a good job that in his first year of running the LCS, the LCS has dissolved. Oh, do you think? Do you, uh, no. Do you think Mark did a bad job? Uh, no, I thought I think Mark did a, actually a pretty good job, and it's unfortunate right, that like the first year that LCS actually had growth was when they pulled the ripcord. Yeah. So, eh, I don't know. Yeah. What can you do? Wait, d- d- do we know like what's happening with him? Is he going to be like commissioner of the Americas region, or is that something you know and can't disclose, or is that something we don't know? Uh, I don't think there's been any public statements about what's happening with Mark. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, uh, also shout out to Duolingo. Uh, and anybody start learning Portuguese right now. They they should sponsor uh, the streams. All right, I will. Uh, I'll catch you later. Thanks for the call. All right, uh, I think it's time, Cubby, for you to Hooray! take a break. With oh okay, the pagoda snack break. Do you happen to have a, a delicious I do snack near you? It was it was prepared in the microwave. Uh, following the instructions from the box. And I got to say, this is my first Pagoda snack. Uh, so shout out to them for being the new sponsor. And well, shout guess... out to Travis for doing the heavy lifting for you know getting the sponsorship. By the yeah. way. Well, hey, everyone. To Cubby's point, Hotline League is brought to you by Pagoda Snacks. From crispy egg rolls to crunchy cream cheese wontons and savory crab rangoons, Pagoda Snacks is ready to crush your cravings. Shop for them in the freezer section at your local grocery store or get them delivered with Instacart. Put the egg rolls in. It's time for the Pagoda snack break. Pagoda chicken egg rolls are, they have a crunchy wrapper, are made with white meat chicken, and are air fryer ready. So, yeah, no, it's uh, Cubby. Are you enjoying your Pagoda egg roll? Uh, it's, it's pretty good. Is that the chicken egg roll? I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, for the chicken one, this is, this is very tasty, actually. Yeah, is, is it, all right, I'm going to look forward to next week. Is it crispy? Um, Let's see on this next bite. The microphone, mm-hmm. unfortunately, uh, does a good job of attenuating out the crisp, but I'm sure it's crispy. I'm actually really mm-hmm. bummed that I am not, uh, like, I, unfortunately, I cannot get pagoda, <laughs> pagoda chicken egg rolls in Berlin. Otherwise, I'd be joining you. I think whenever I'm back in the States, we're definitely going to both be snacking on these, but... Yeah, it's pretty cool that Pagoda came on to sponsor Hotline League. Uh, again, like you, a lot of you have seen, their uh, their themselves be featured in the LCS broadcast. We saw Raz in the Patoga. I'm mm-hmm. I'm thankfully not in a Patoga yet, but maybe that will happen at some point in time. Uh, yeah, it's just really cool to see Pagoda coming on, and uh, this is a nice little little break for us. So, Cubby, how you been overall lately? As we're as we're in the pagoda snack break, I guess your your mouth is full right now. So I will vamp mm-hmm. with so make sure that you don't have to eat with your mouth or talk with your mouth. I, I think it's full. next caller time. I think that's how we vamp. <laughs> okay. well, that was tasty. That was tasty. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. No. Thanks to Pagoda for sponsoring the stream and the show. Really appreciate them coming on board. You can check out Pagoda. Uh, they are available in the freezer section at your local grocery store. They're available to be delivered on Instacart. Please let us know if you do end up trying Pagoda. Uh, tweet at us, mention it in the Discord, etc. Those are the types of things that let us um, communicate to our new sponsor that you all are hungry for Pagoda snacks. And so if you do end up picking up some uh, Pagoda snacks, please let us know. Uh, you can, again, it's pretty easy. Just next time you're at the grocery store, check it out. Check it out on Instagram. Thank you, Pagoda, for sponsoring the show. Uh, Cubby, GT Chang says how to call in. Do you want to give an explanation? Discord.gg slash Travis. Join, drop your take at me. There you go. Thank you. I see people putting the instructions in too, so that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, you want to grab the next caller? Uh, they're already in. Oh, fantastic. That was quick. It's, uh, it's hard whenever I only have uh, I... one <clears throat> monitor. Dixie Cup is here. Dixie Cup, where are you calling from? I am calling from Culver City, Los Angeles. Culver City, Los Angeles. What do you want to talk about on the show? I want to talk about, I feel like over the past day, 
obviously we're we're very disappointed at the loss of our third seed 100 thieves and plans um but i feel like the hate for 100 thieves and everything just being like i can't believe this happened is a little unwarranted um it was obviously we want them to win plans but this was a team this year that overperformed to everyone's expectations like by a lot everyone had them seventh and eighth both splits and then they made worlds so to look at this year and say well it was a failure for 100 thieves um can't believe they didn't get out of plans they lost r7 boo i think it's a little unwarranted and i think if we're going to blame 100 thieves for that we need to point the finger equally at every single team in the lcs that just didn't perform against them right so that's kind of where i'm at i think the I mean, hate should be directed at cubby and papa smithy for telling me that they're definitely going to get out of plans uh yeah no it's for sure was you know they had the easiest draw ever and if they lose they could be in trouble that was definitely the caveat but you know it's fun um anyway um i mean yeah i they lost 100 thieves all the teams to get there i i think that you could argue that teams with more experience like could have been in better shape than 100 thieves going in i mean my my resentment with 100 thieves is that they just played really bad at worlds like the the swaps they were so lost on swaps uh like some of the games like playing out their win cons i mean 100 thieves they were a team that uh, like when in doubt they'd fight right well, they, there were some fights they were taking that were just terrible. And some of the, like, it ended up losing some ga some games. I mean, the game against PSG where River was playing Lilia, I mean, the, like, he got picked two, three times early in the game. I don't think Lilia was a great pick, but like, regardless, like, I don't care what the 100 Thieves drafts were. They played so poorly that, like, any draft they had, I don't think they were going to win. Uh, and, like, that's the disappointment for me is I, I don't feel like this team really had a true shot to get out because even in the games where they did win, they still were taking poor fights, had poor moments. Like, this wasn't a team that ended up being super competitive, right? So, yeah, that was, um, that, that, that was, yeah, that, that's where I was just disappointed, right? Yeah, I think my overall sentiment with it is if, we all put them at seventh, eighth, last place in the league in all of our power rankings this year, and then they they lost to a minor region. Do we think that when we rank the LCS teams seventh to eighth, that our eighth seeds are better than the first seeds for minor regions? You know, and so to me, I'm like, I think they outperformed their expectations on the year, even though they lost in play-ins. Um, and while it's disappointing. I think we're so quick to forget that we all wrote them off kind of at the beginning of the year anyways, right? And it's it's one of those things that I'm trying to articulate what I'm thinking. It's Travis, if you have anything, you can go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that uh, I think the 100T thing is really interesting. I do believe the general consensus is that C9 would not have lost in their stead. I think I, I don't know had, about that. Really? PSG is a good team. Yeah, PSG is like actually. Oh, a good team. I guess I mean, uh, you know, in that the R7. Match, no. Yes. Yeah. At R7. No. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. Again, I don't think C9 would have ended up in this situation. Is what I would say. Um, and I, I don't mean to do the whole like weird revisionist history that people do, where they're like, oh. Uh, we should have sent this team instead or whatever, like Hunter T or in the spot. C9 did not. Yeah, they needed to play a certain way on a certain day, and they did not. I actually think C9 probably had the worst day on the day that Hunter T had their best day, and that's what we ended up seeing. And then everything probably went back to normal afterwards in terms of Hunter T, and C9 probably would have gotten looked better again if they had been able to continue to play matches. But it is what it is. Like, Hunter T won. They got the spot. They deserve to be here. I have no ill will towards them for doing that. It's cool that these players got the experience that they did. Uh, obviously, I wish they'd had a different experience, but it's cool that they got to, to learn a lot. 
but yeah, I, I it is it is a little disappointing because I think that we could have had three North American teams in plans for our final North American plan. Or, sorry, three North American teams in Swiss for our final North American Worlds outing, and I I don't I don't fault Hunter T. I I, I get why people are down on them or they're frustrated that this ended up happening, but this was always kind of a miracle story that they ended up making it to worlds. And I'm not shocked to see that they were not able to, to progress further. Um, though I do feel like they play below their, I guess below where, where they had been previously. And I, and I yeah. do, yeah. I do wonder how much of that is like, it's so funny not to continue to just too hard, but like leading up to this in like hotline league and in interviews with those players, I was like, Hey, is there any concern? Because we often see a situation where teams get shell shocked or players get shell shocked, especially new players, when they go to Worlds or MSI and they're playing against completely different competition and they just get stomped in a way that they don't normally in LCS. And I wonder if that if their confidence gets shaken, they play differently, it's like a disaster. And I wonder if that's what ended up happening. I, I Kevin, based off of what you saw on stage, do you feel like there's a chance that that could have been the case? I mean, maybe. I don't think. I mean, God, like the swaps were just so bad. Like, I, I don't know if that's a confidence thing. Like, they, they just didn't know what was going on with swaps. And I, again, like, I, I don't think it was a confidence thing. If anything, this team was overconfident. I, I, I think that like they needed someone in the team to be like, hey, we can't take this play, and that would have helped them a lot. Um. And they act like again, they actually I thought they had okay drafts for like the majority of uh their time and I just like they just did not play well on stage. I, I think if anything it was nerves uh or like not leaning on what was truly important in scrims. I mean some of the decisions and some of like what ended up happening was just really poor on the rift. Uh so yeah, I, I don't think that um I, I don't know if it was a confidence thing, but it, I, either way it was just poor you know yeah i think obviously they didn't show up two days in a row right and it is a bummer to me and maybe it's just because i had such low expectations of them even making worlds as a hundred thieves fan in the first place that i was i was excited to see them there i wasn't excited to wake up at 7 a.m but i did <laughs> you know and to me obviously we would have wanted them to go to swiss but the goal for me at this point is like, I want North America to win worlds. And like, that was never going to happen with a hundred thieves. Like it wasn't. And so them getting, not making it to Swiss just doesn't really feel like that big of a blow to me um, or to the region because they earned that spot, but it was, as Travis said, like kind of a miracle story. Right. So um, that's, that's how I'm with it. Maybe it's coping, right. I'm going to take some three big, huffs of hopium for the other two NA teams that are in Swiss. Um, because I just, I think our expectation should be to win worlds, not let's get out of groups, you know, okay. like I'm just, I'm tired of the selling ourselves short in the narrative. And I know we haven't proved it, but that's where I'm at. <laughs> I mean, I, I respect that as a fan. I, I would, as an analyst, I'm going to say that's, that's steep, but um, yeah, I, I, as a, as a fan, a hundred thieves, uh, Dixie cup, it, what do you want to see with this team going into next year? Honestly, I think Golden Glue is fantastic. Like, keep that guy as, as much as possible. Like, I think he outdrafted a lot this year. I think he really rallied a group of young guys um, to overperform their expectations. Um, I, I don't really know as of yet. I haven't really started thinking about what changes I would want made. Um, I think it's a group. I think is phenomenal. I think Sniper's young. Um, I, I think the whole team's young that maybe if there's just another one other leader that gets brought in um, to kind of lead that, um, that it could could be something special. I mean, it gets me nervous with rumors, but, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yes, we will. All right. Uh, Dixie Cup, thank you so much. Uh, you know, actually, I do have a question. Do we have many takes in the queue for Team Liquid and FlyQuest? Not really. I, okay. I would love one. Um, well, I, 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 we do. We do have one coming up. We do have one coming up. Yeah, I think, but not directly with them. Yeah, you tell me if if it's worth having this because I see 
we can postpone this conversation if you think it's better for the call, but I have seen Hunter T fall be used as a weapon against the credibility of the LCS as a whole and the potential of the two remaining teams, right? Noted LCS hater, Yanya, in the chat is saying that, but also I've seen it a bunch of different places, right? Where they're like, oh yeah, you know, like Travis, don't hype LCS because like 100T has already ended this or like the North America greater than EU narrative is dead now that 100 Thieves didn't make it through and Mad Lions is. Do you, what do you think of that? Because I think it's kind of goofy. Um, I think it's goofy. I think that for the entire year, TL and FlyQuest were head and shoulders above the rest of the league, and C9 was head and shoulders above the rest of the league in summer, and they just lost 100 Thieves. Um, so I would not discredit them. And if you want further proof, uh, you got G2 in interviews saying that like the West is legit and TL is like actually good. Um, so yeah, I, I actually, I think that these teams, I still have hope for at least one Western team to make it out between G2, FlyQuest, and TL. Like, for me, that's the expectation. And there's a better chance for two than what I've seen since, you know, the days where EU was really good. And for NA, this is the most hopeful I've been since 2016. 100 Thieves' performance did not change that. Um, also, for some of the people saying, like, Mad Lions overperformed, I mean, sometimes in, you know, this tournament, you do have to just show up, like, with a good patch read and play good on the days. We've seen Mad play well. Uh, on their days, and I don't think the PSG really showed up against Mad at all. Like they, PSG played much better later on in the tournament. I think they had better reads. Um, but yeah, I mean, credit to Mad, who, uh, I mean, a lot of people were counting out, much like 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves had a sub-50% win rate in summer. Not many people were talking about that. It was mostly talking about how Mad were sub-50% win rate since uh, spring, or after their winter split. Uh, so I, I, I think that Mad definitely deserves some credit for overcoming i mean their own demons being mad lions and existing in plans right uh and actually making it out so props to them yeah yeah i i'm excited to see what lcs can do i don't think that it makes sense to discount the west or north america's capabilities based off of the performance of 100t and so i would just i i'm happy to hear that you're in the same place as me cubby because i i don't believe that 100t foretells some disaster scenario for the lcs and i think it's it's goofy to imply that uh dixie yeah. Cup, thank you so much though anything you want to shout out here at the end yeah thanks for having me i will just say shout out tl and fly like do your best show up have fun um i'm hoping we perform as a lifelong Bengals fan i know what it's been like to <laughs> to be a fan of a team equating that to the lcs as a region um and see 27 years of losses, you know, but you know, we made it to a Super Bowl once. I have no doubt that NA can make it to finals. Thank you. Thanks so much for the call, and we'll catch you next time. All right. Being a Bengals fan is tough, Travis. I, I know you don't know, but that, that's pretty rough. I mean, I don't hear about them anyone. often, so I can understand that they're well, they're, they're not. Cincinnati. So. I just, uh, I mean, I feel like I can usually tell how successful a traditional sports team is based off of how much brand awareness I have around them. <laughs> uh, True. You know, like the Patriots are probably pretty good because I always hear about them. Uh, all right. Not this year, but yes. Yeah, generally speaking, yeah. yeah. All right. We all have, right. Uh, we're getting into the next call, but here's some subs. First off, thank you, Lit Drummer Boy, uh, for the 50 months Arrowhydras with the 40. Evil Trenton gave a five subs. Twitch gave, uh, gifted a sub. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Right now, it's the final week of September. So I believe there's a thing that triggers where if you gift five subs, Twitch gifts an extra sub. So if that is something that you're interested in doing, if you sometimes like to gift subs, uh, that would be pretty cool. Also, subs are discounted. This is the next week. The price of subs is going to go up because it's September. So if you'd like to sub to the channel or you have a prime sub that you would extend, now's the time to do it. I'm trying to save you money. Perchy99, thank you for the 33 months slot cat for the 12. Director Donut, thanks for the resub. Of, and yeah, thank you. Over on YouTube, we don't have any super chats or memberships yet, but if you would like to become a member, you can do so on on YouTube. One, you know, it puts you in a little bit of contention with Twitch. You, you get to 
battle it out with their users and suggest that perhaps your platform is the better one for us to stream on. But also, uh, you get early access to a bunch of content, and we'll be having Worlds content going up uh, starting soon. So now's a good time to become a member over on YouTube. You can become a member for as low as $2.99. I probably don't emphasize that enough. I made it very cheap to become a member on YouTube, so maybe you might consider doing so. Weldon is here. Early access to content is great, by the yeah. way, I will say. Yeah. Weldon is here. Weldon, where are you calling from? Hello, I'm calling in from Morgantown, West Virginia. Nice. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, I want to talk about how two Western teams will make it out of Swiss stage. All right. Uh, which... Do you have two in mind? Yeah. Um, well, I guess three, but more just I think two will make it out. I think either TL or FlyQuest will make it out and G2. Okay. Okay, so you said, wait, you said three? You said, or you said TL well, or FlyQuest? I think, I think three po have a good chance of making it out, those three, but I think only two of them will probably make it out. Okay, okay. Why, why are they going to make it out? Well, first of all, there's a very high chance of a Western team making at least one making it out of Swiss stage because of the way the bracket works and how there's a good chance that two Eastern teams will end up knocking one up out at like the 2-2 two -two mark or somewhere along that line. And then like last year, two Western teams will face each other at when they're 2-2 two and two, and then that way there will be at least one Western team going on. And... I think just based on how the Eastern teams played, like they're they're definitely beatable, especially top LNG. We don't know how what's going on there, and uh, I don't know, Cubby, have you watched the uh, LCK? Yeah, the, the, the I, I watched more tournament. I watched more LCK than LPL, but I did watch like pretty much all of LPL playoffs, at least the NRSK matches. Yeah. Ooh. And then regular season somewhat yeah i think there are definitely good chances for upsets just based on how, how good tl's macro is and just i think fly has a very high peak if they can play well on the game day and like teams like top esports even if they're ranked very high they tend they tend to collapse after losing one game it seems like they don't have the best mental it seems and just the Dam One and T One series was not the greatest quality. It was <laughs> bad. Yeah, so I think it's definitely possible for two Western teams to make it out as long okay. as they peak on the day. So if if the two Western teams you have making it out, let's assume that two of the Eastern teams aren't making it. I know that some people have hopes for PSG. On ironically, I've seen, um, but I'm just gonna assume like out, so out of the four Eastern teams, like which ones do you think do not make it out? Or the eight, sorry. From the, the um, Omega for regions. me, I think I think Damwon's not going to make him out and top esports. Okay. Um. All right. I I mean, for me, I think that I I think the patch is really really good for Damwon, and that's the one concern that I have because the Showmaker being able to play like the Ori Syndra meta, and I'm expecting a few other. Uh, like champs to maybe sneak in that we didn't see in play-ins that can counter those. And then also this pool for Lucid, like he has uh, Lee Sin, like is available potentially. It is for Lucid, an owner, if you're that good of the champion, which they are. Um, Jarvan, really good for Lucid. I, I feel like the top side for Damwon ends up fitting really well. The meta is pretty similar to what King in One World's on, right? Uh, like mine is Cassante, and we might see some more Aatrox. Uh, bot side aiming uh, carries are a little bit less prevalent, which will hurt aiming. Aiming is the super carry of that team, but uh, you got to assume that like with the meta being so good for Showmaker, it's going to be better. Uh, top, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about top. I think L the team that I'm most curious about is actually LNG. Because uh, if I'm a TL fan, I, I think that I have hope for TL actually going 1-0. Like, I'd give TL, uh, like I think that match is unironically a 50-50. And I'm really curious what kind of form LNG looks like they're in because, of course, Scout is now at the tournament. But I, I don't know, like, you know, did we, were they able to scrim with Scout, like, while he was gone? Do they actually, uh, you know, play with, um, who was going to step in? Yagao, right? 
like what kind of form is LNG in? Because Scout is really big for that team. And I will say that like of all the mids in um, LPL, I, I do think the meta is okay for Scout. He kind of lost to Zier and he doesn't, he, he might Silas, but like Silas isn't in the best spot. His Yona I expect to be banned. And then Akali is meh. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, um, I, I, I think that like, that would be the team that I would look to get out. Um, I'm curious, do you have more hope in G2 or TL? Um, I think it really just depends on the bracket draw, to be honest. I think like, that's fair, by the way. <laughs> it's like, so, it's so much of this ends up being based off of how things go. There's also G2 just tends to peak at the right time most of the time. I yeah, mean, it didn't happen at Last Worlds, but they they also tend to have pretty good meta reads and then just have weird pick flex picks that work a lot and just surprise other teams. Cubby, what did you think of the draw? <laughs> I thought the first round draw was awesome. I, I, I'm actually I thought it was a really good draw. And if you're an NA fan, I think that you got like the best draw you could possibly get. With Fly getting Gam and TL getting LNG. I mean, like being a pool two versus a pool three team, it, it's really tough to like figure out, you know, like what team you want to face. If I'm TL, I did not want to face Weibo. I think that Weibo is arguably the second seed from LPL coming in. Um and then I, I think Damwon is the team that a lot of people were hoping for. But again, I, I've been kind of calling Damwon my dark horse for the tournament just because I do think the meta changes are so good for them. And a lot of people just aren't familiar with Lucid from his time in Challengers League uh, and don't understand like how good he is at some of like he is baby owner pretty much with like his pool. Um, and his Lee Sin is like legitimately disgusting. So I, I know that these like we didn't see a ton of it. But again, I expect that Lucid will play it. Uh, and I think that uh, Damwon, like, they are willing to play a lot of different picks and champs, and I think that that would have actually been not quite as good for TL. Uh, so I think that TL actually got the matchup they want. Also, I know that, um, like, Scout, of course, very good melee mid player. I, Scout is a just a very, very good player. But TL kind of did make their money playing into melees for a lot of, like, when APAs played. I, I, the lane swaps and the proactivity from TL worked because they were able to rotate APA uh, and rotate grub advantages into melees being played in mid to then like get f more plates, get econ faster and also deny those champions. So I am really curious, like Yone is a champ that I don't expect TL to play and is like OP on this patch. I'm really curious to see off the bat. I think they'll ban it against LNG just because Scout is that good at it, but it is a champ where they made a lot of like good plays into Yone. If you look at their record into it, throughout LCS. That was a champ that they actually abused when other teams would pick. And that's a style that TL would abuse with APA when other teams picked into it. So I, I am really curious to see what ends up happening there. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to learn a lot from TL off of their first um, matchup. Also, I, I do want to just say that like, NA fans, I wouldn't have too much hope about the TL scrim rumors because TL have always stomped in scrims. Like that, that TL was just always the best scrim team uh, that we had. So I, I think that them going over there and playing the way that they are, I'm not surprised that scrims are going really well for them. Uh, and I would not actually factor that into as much of their main stage performance as like you would want to. Scrim rumors are fake. Uh, TL, they they scrim well. They, they take it really seriously. But like, I mean, they play to, you know, like test stuff and win. Um, whereas I think that other teams definitely play looser than TL. So I would not put too much stock into the scrim rumors. Do you, is there an argument to be made? And I ask this legitimately. I'm not trying to, to troll that it's actually not good to win your first match because if you lose, then you get to hopefully dodge some of the good teams. I guess maybe you eventually have to face them anyway, but it it might suck if like you win your first match and then you go up against the 2024 yeah. World Championship team in I your mean, next match. Can, can chat help me with this, actually? Because I know that the draws are really different compared to last uh, world, so I actually yeah, think it's better to win early. You, you can't, can't get rematched. rematch. Yeah. Yes. So I I want to win early because a you get the win and then b I'd rather face BLG in round two than round five. You know. But um, so. I think if you're okay, let's say you are fly and you beat Gam, you probably want to be able to face Gam again, right? Or like if you do you think like TL could beat LNG, like you'd want to like if you. 
I think you want the rematch if you are confident you can win because you could probably beat them the second time. And so I mean, I think yeah, it actually might hurt. I'll, I'll just take the wins. I I'll, I'll just take the wins. Like, you you could also argue if you lose, you're gonna face a worse opponent opponent earlier on, and so then you wouldn't be able to face them later on, right? Um, yeah. I, I think that the one argument for winning is like a BLG is a team that I would, would reasonably expect to go three zero, right, and make it out. So if you do face BLG in round two or round three, that isn't a like denied rematch that you get, which honestly could be better. I mean, that's just a scheduled loss, if we're being honest. I think PLG is the team that I'm most most scared of just because they will absolutely Thanos you in lane phase. Uh, and that's really hard. I, yeah. I, if I'm an NA team, I think PLG is just the team, like, individually, like, they are just, they are just ridiculous. Uh, and Ben is just on another level. So that's the one I'm really scared of. But I, that, that's, inter like, the theory is interesting. I'll, I'll take the win. Um, and because, like, if you lose, again, like, obviously FlyQuest is facing Gam now, but if they win... Like maybe you don't face PSG now until like you're one and two or one and one. Like that's better, right? Yeah. Because that's another team where like I, I not take anything away from PSG. I think like PSG is a legitimately good team, but like I don't want to face I want to face PSG later on compared to like a T one or a Weibo uh, or a down one stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have to look at the bracket to understand a little bit more. Like I'd have to look at I it don't and simulate out rule. the the stuff. Yeah. Um, Re region lock breaks after the next round, right? So, like, you cannot face your own region for the first two rounds, and I think it breaks, no? Oh, and I thought no you rematches could, throughout. I thought the only thing that they protected was against this year was no rematches. So I think you, I thought you could face, like, after after the first round, I thought you could face your region, but maybe I'm wrong. It's no, oh, it's only first round? I thought it was first and second. I, I think it's only... Yeah, no Same civil thing wars. First round. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll have to check. Oh uh, no, I mean, I'm. It's first and second. I I thought it was first and second because last year's second round we got all the civil wars, which I thought was good for the tournament. By the way, yes. I, I getting the civil wars early it guaranteed for a banger third round, which yeah. I would rather have. It, dude, it was so, so annoying that like nobody yeah. had the four. Like I talked about that with Mark on Hotline League last year, where I was like, I think it's good that we're getting these out of the way early on. Yes. But yes. like ever, but because it was the first time the format had happened, no one was able to think beyond like that first. They're like, "Oh, this format's dog shit." Because now they're like matching against each other. I'm like, guys, like when you have so many stipulations and you have such a lopsided group of teams, you're gonna have to deal with rematches or um, civil wars. So I don't know. It's just very goofy. Um, somebody says Travis looks like he's already celebrating Oktoberfest. Guys, it's 5:45 a.m. here, and I've been up since. 3.30, so screw you with all your mean language in the chat. Uh, anyway, I, I I don't know. We'll see how things go. I'm I'm pretty confident we can get two Western teams out. Um, I think that the West seems to be showing up stronger this year than in the past. Maybe that will end up being a goofy thing to say, but like I think there should be paths out. I mean, and, and if there's not, if we can't get one out, then something will have gone horribly wrong, because I think this format should make it easy to usually get at least one out. So, um, yeah, either way, uh, Caller, Weldon, anything you would add to anything we just talked about here? Um, no, I do think going 0 and 1 is probably worse than going 1. Probably worse than going 1 and 0, though, just because if you go in 0 and 1, there's a chance you either go against Top or T1 or Gen G or Weibo in 0 and 1, and then you're just like 0 2, probably. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, anything that you want to shout out here at the end? Um, I want to shout out Wild Turtle, my favorite ADC to watch in the LCS, and FlyQuest for winning LCS. New winners are always hype to see. Uh, LEC had like one winner this year, so <laughs> not very exciting, but you know, <laughs> happens. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for hosting. Yeah, thanks for calling in. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. Okay, see ya. See ya. All right. We're going to take another break right now to talk about our world's coverage partner, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is awesome. Uh, if you could do so responsibly, please go check out the link uh, in the description of this video or in the podcast uh, description or will be popping up in the live chats here as well if you're watching live 
when you do sign up, please use code Travis so that you can get access to the promo that they do, where basically when you make your first play for, you can just, you can just play $5 even if you wanted to, they will add $50 in promo to your account, win or lose on that first play. So it's a pretty cool thing that they're doing. I uh, really appreciate them coming in to sponsor our world coverage to send me to Berlin. The reason I'm live in Berlin, being able to make content for all of you is because of prize picks. I, I did not have another sponsor lined up. You know, these guys came through for us when we needed them. So I really appreciate prize picks doing so. Uh, but yeah. Cubby, uh, the boards are already up. This is really exciting because normally when we do Hotline League uh, during the LCS times, the, the boards for the uh, LCS plays are not up yet. But for, for once now, we are able to have you give some live picks uh, and some suggestions yeah. on things that you're looking at right now on the prize picks board. I will say, I mean, the real reason I wore this jersey is because the Caleb Williams, for the first four weeks of the season, they, they had the deal where they gave a free square. That's and I, I won three out of four of those. And the only one I lost, I missed by a yard on my second leg. So that, that was a bummer. But um, yeah, the, the, board is, the board's up. So looking at what we have, um, some of the things that I've actually been looking at, if you're interested in prize picks, is a lot of the, I've been looking at what junglers play and what I think they're going to pick in a series. Because the difference between playing a Malachi versus a Brand, it could be the difference between, you know, having one kill or five kills in a game reasonably. So something I really like is actually Lucid. Uh, right now, it's two kills for map, uh, like their best of one. I think that Lucid is a really good carry player, and I could see him playing uh, some more picks that can net more kills than that uh, for Dom Juan. So I like that one a lot. Do you take more uh, on also, Lucid for kills? Oh, yeah, for sure more. For sure more. Uh, also, TL is not favored against LNG, and I actually think TL is a pretty good shot. A APA being at two and a half kills from Map One, I, I could, I mean, regardless of how that game goes, I could like three is not a big number, and TL will play fast, they'll play bloody. Uh, so I actually like uh, APA over two and a half quite a bit. Uh, and then same with FlyQuest. I think that uh, taking the over on some of the GOM members, like Levi is sitting at two kills from Map One. Uh, going over that, that's going to be a bloody game regardless of how it's played. So uh, I think those are a few of the ones where I, I actually think that you have some real edge if, if you take a few of those picks and make a lineup out of that. So um, I think after this, I might be making a couple of lineups, Travis. Nice. Yeah, it's super cool uh, to be able to have your your takes in here. I know that also that you've been sharing some of your picks in the prize picks chat on Discord. So while that's obviously available for... Those, those picks are available right now. Obviously, as the games go on, we'll be able to get some more lineups and suggestions and picks in the prize picks chat over on Discord. So highly recommend people check that out. Uh, it's just discord.gg if you're listening to, or discord.gg slash Travis if you're listening to this after the fact. But there's also links available uh, on my link tree and also in Discord and all that, or on Twitch chat and YouTube chat, etc. So... Uh, go check that out. But yeah, thank you to Price Picks for partnering with us for our Worlds coverage. Really cool to have them in, and it's awesome that we're in a place right now where uh, Cubby can provide some picks for our listeners. All right, let's get into the next caller. We got. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go do that. Deathpool. Um, let's see. Deathpool gifted five community subs which also meant that Twitch gifted a sub. Again, with that September thing, if you gift five subs or more, Twitch gives out a sub, which is pretty cool. And over on YouTube, we got our very first uh, our very first community contribution of the night with 504 Caesar sending a $19.99 super chat who said, missed all of Hotline League drinking some beer with friends, but shout out to the LCS and all the chats going on. 504 Caesar, we still got Hotline League going. We've got a little bit more time, got a couple more calls, so please... Uh, stick around. You can enjoy your beer with your friends while watching Hotline League. Looks like we've got our next caller here. It's none other than Yami. Yami, where are you calling from? Uh, the DMV. The DMV. Okay. What do you want to talk That's about right. on the show? Right. Um, okay, so my take is I remember back when the America's League merger thing was announced, everybody, including me, was actually rather upset that America was, quote-unquote, or NA was, quote-unquote, losing um, a slot. And I think that we can look at some events that have occurred this year 
and maybe sort of start to draw the conclusion that America or that NA, there was my like US centric mind, um, should not necessarily be entitled to as many slots as we have been getting at international events. We can look to FlyQuest getting disqualified from MSI and plans earlier this year. We can look to the um, Tier 2 uh, Americas tournament that just happened where our first seed, actually, was Dragon Steel our first or second seed? One of our top two seeds got knocked out pretty early into the tournament, and then... Our other seed ended up losing the tournament to the Brazilian first seed after getting knocked down into loser's bracket. Um, and then we can look to this plans where our third seed just got creamed by <laughs> by um, the Latin American first seed. And I think we can kind of start to see that maybe some of the outrage and the insistence that America doesn't deserve to get grouped in with the um, other America's regions was a little bit misplaced and a little bit cope. Um, and this isn't me saying this to, like, dunk on t- t- dunk on 100 Thieves or dunk on FlyQuest. I think it's to say, like, the, re- the, the, the merger might actually result in a competitive region where it's not just going to be NA curb stomping um, the new North Conference team and the South Conference team teams when we have our tournaments and it's not necessarily like us losing something that we should have otherwise been entitled to because we're just so much better than them um yeah i okay i one thing that i i do like kind of agree with i mean i will say i i would i don't want to bring like a tier two tournament into this uh but i will use that to say that there is definitely an aura of, hey, we should just beat the CBLOL teams, right? And part of that is the economics. Uh, First off, like the South Conference and the Brazilian teams, the cost of living in Brazil is significantly cheaper than the cost of living in the U.S., especially L.A. Uh, Player salaries, if you are going to play for an LCS team, are likely to be uh, like 10 times more than what you will make for a CBLOL team. And that's not outlandish. Uh, That is just somewhat how the cost of living is and how it works. I think that going into uh, the Americas for the upcoming year, like if I'm a coach for an LCS team, I mean, I would tell all my guys, like especially going into uh, like the tournament where the both conferences combine, look, you're playing against people that want your spot. Like they're hungry. Uh, like They're playing for less. They're playing to beat you. You are the ones that have always, uh, you know, been given the silver spoon. And that is definitely going to put a target on the backs of all the North Conference teams. Do I, I think that CB Law has improved a lot in terms of their play and where they're at. I, I don't watch their region for the majority of the tournament, but uh, I know a few analysts that do, and I, I trust them when they say that a lot of those teams have improved and gotten better. Uh, and I, I, But I don't think it's going to lead to like a, a straight up like overtaking. I just think that we as fans have to stop looking at them like, oh, like that should be a free win because it was very clear, at least in the last two instances, that it was not. Uh, now, is that because in CB Law they create very top-heavy rosters, which they do, because it is a, a league where I feel like looking at the top teams in that league, there the talent is more condensed than what it was in LCS. Uh, I think that that is reasonable to say. I, I think that that is something where I, I'm not sure. So that might be something to look out for going going, you know, forward. But yeah. Yeah. I I don't know, Cubby. Is this really gonna be competitive? Uh, like uh, one or one or two teams will be competitive, yes. Okay. I, I, I legitimately think so. I don't think that it should be a granted given that the LCS North Conference will get two out of the three uh, world slots. It, it's It shouldn't be looked at as free. And if you do, then what's going to happen is what happened in Tier 2 Americas and what happened here. I, it, it should never be looked at as free, no. I don't think that it should look, be looked at free, but I do think from... We should be heavily favored based on economics, yes. Yeah, I, th- I think... Yeah. And, and historical precedent, right? Like, so yes. Collar is... Uh, you're suggesting, yeah, me, that like... If you look at this year, it should be fairly competitive. But like I, 
I think I would want to see more than just one year to feel this way. Um, because I, I think when you look at just a decade plus of the performance of these two regions, that one has been dramatically stronger than the other, and especially with like the LATAM stuff uh, as well. And so I don't really feel as though it is likely that we will see really incredible competition, uh, at least in the beginning. Now, maybe I'm wrong and Brazil's popping off and they're like getting way better than everyone thinks that they've been historically and all this stuff. But it, it doesn't strike me as a thing where I can look at just like the hundred thieves match and like a tier two match and be like, Oh yeah, actually this is going to be like a strong rivalry between these different regions. Like, I, I agree. don't know. I, I, mean, I just don't and, feel as though yeah. I'm ready to, to get there yet. Uh, I, it would be nice though. I, I think it would be cool if Brazil, like, look, what I don't want is for LCS to always have like a crazy sick match. And then for, or I guess the North to have a crazy sick match. And then we go play these matches against Brazil or the South conference that feel like a waste of everyone's time. Uh, I think that that would be really a bummer. So I'm not saying that I necessarily want it to be incredibly one-sided, but I just, I am not confident that based off of historical precedent that this stuff will be, will be competitive. Here, here is the one thing that like actually really concerns me though. Yeah. I mean, do you have any thoughts on any of this? I think it's fair to not necessarily read too much into a tier two tournament. Um, I just think what I'm looking at as I kind of have this idea is I think the LCS has been really competitive this year. And I, again, I don't want it to read like I'm saying this is bad. I just think that the way North American fans, and maybe this is to some degree overcompensation, think about our role as a quote unquote major region. We tend to talk about it like, okay, well, we're not LCK, LPL, but we're so, 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 so much better than CB LOL, PCS, VCS. LJL. Okay, I mean, <laughs> but we we tend to have this sort of like sense of entitlement and sense of like, it's not even close. How dare we be grouped up with them? And I'm not necessarily sure that our performance this year, at least, merits that. And I, 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 I and I, I guess I also agree, like, saying, okay, let's only look at a year is a little bit like not reasonable. But we are willing to do that when it comes to more positive stuff. Like, people are very willing to look at, like, TL's performance in one series versus T1 and be like, this is going to be, like, the year that North America has our deepest run since 2016 or whatever. Or we're going to really pop off at Worlds. And I'm not discrediting that. I'm a huge TL fan. I'm doing that, too. But it just is, like, <laughs> I think that it is not unreasonable to kind of do the inverse a little bit too yeah i get that i think the circumstances are different because i think looking at how team liquid does in an international match is a good gauge of what they are capable of in the next couple of months whereas i don't think that looking at 100 thieves in this match is a good indicator of what top tier competition will be like for the next couple of years between these two regions you know what i mean i i have one the, the one concern I have, and this is going to be off of like, you know, a couple anecdotes. Uh, you know, I, I talk with a lot of people that are trying to make it into, you know, the pro leagues and LCS, just given what my position is being a tier two caster. And I've talked to multiple coaches and who have said, I have one quote, like verbatim. I have got, I've been given more light a day by the CB law than the LCS in the last five years of trying in terms of just talking with people to connect and get interviews. Like, for me, that is the biggest concern uh, moving forward because I really feel like CB Law, these guys are so hungry and they have an opportunity where they can not only play to compete with the LCS in the North Conference, but they can also play, compete to actually land some of those slots themselves, which would lead to a significantly higher salary and also quality of life to bring back to what they have. Uh, if they still want to be like live and be located in Brazil, just looking at salaries. I, I really think that there is a hunger aspect that is missing that I have seen from CB Law. You look at their fans, you look at the players, like what, what they, they play with their heart on their sleeve. I mean, 
maybe uh, Teton shouldn't play with that because like maybe then he'd actually hear his team yelling that LeBlanc's going to kill him and they could have ended that game way faster. You know, there's arguments for that too. But I actually do get concerned because I, I really feel like they're coming in with a target on everyone's back in the North, North Conference. And when I hear someone just something as basic as like having a conversation, right? I, I've been talking with like two or three schools of late uh, just to like go talk like with them uh, just about casting like to their club, right? I, anyone that like reaches out to me, I'm not the busiest person in the world, but like I really do try and like help out how I can. But to hear someone like that is trying to get a pro gig just kind of be refused to actually have basic conversations about getting those gigs and it's saying that he's getting more light of day in CB law in the past, like than he has in LCS in the past five years. That stuff that like actually concerns me uh, moving forward in terms of uh, both conferences being as competitive as they could be. Because uh, I really feel like bottom up, like an effort, like that is what matters when it comes to this game. So I that is something where just based on that, based on what we've seen of late, like I actually do have some more reason to be skeptical uh, that it will be actually a very close rivalry than what's being pitched. Uh, thanks so much for calling in. Anything that you wanted to add to this? Uh, anything that you, you felt we didn't cover, Yami? Um, I did have one bit of like, I don't know if it's hopium exactly, but like one kind of comment to add to something Cubby was saying earlier, which is like, <clears throat> maybe teams will start to do some outreach to Brazilian fans. <clears throat> maybe we can try and get more of a sense of like solidarity within the league. I don't, I don't know if it's plural or singular, which is like TL, I think does have some Brazilian teams. So they might be a candidate for an org that could try and look to do some outreach there. Um, I don't super follow Valorant, but they, I know their last year in game changers, their team was a very good team there. They had a lot of hype behind them. The TL fans <laughs> in Brazil were pretty, pretty excited for that. So maybe if we can get even like a fraction of that energy, that would be something. Um, I think R6 that's like... is electric, man, in, in that conference, in that region, by the way. Yeah. The uh, Rainbow Six Siege, yeah. Oh. Uh, is that is that related to R7? No. <laughs> yeah, it's just fandom. Well, yeah, I mean, thank you so much. Anything you want to shout out here at the end? Yes. So my shout out is to uh, my longtime friend, Happy Blue Guy, who also watches Hotline League pretty regularly. And then another shout out to another friend of mine, Kitten Stakes, who got me to watch the Race to World first this year, even though I don't play WoW at all. Um, which, if you are a North American esports fan or a TL fan, especially, we actually won this year. We beat out EU, so EU is greater than NA in at least one esport. Um, uh, that was actually a really exciting race. I think it was one of apparently one of the best in recent years. So if anyone wants to like go back and watch any of the word for world first first kills that TL got, the Kaiveza one and then the final one on Queen Anserat were both very exciting. Even if you don't know anything about WoW, um, and then my final shout outs to Travis for sacrificing his sleep schedule for us and getting up at 3 a.m. Even Ooh. though it's clearly weighing on him. Well, clearly. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, everybody, people are roasted to be left <laughs> and right. Thank you so much, Yami, for the call. We'll catch you next time. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Uh, we've got time for two more callers here, uh, just because I think we're going a little bit longer tonight because we started a little later. So, um, But, yeah, if uh, we want to go grab the next caller, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Off goes Cubby. Oh. Off goes Cubby. Hello? You guys can hear me, right? I'm not going crazy. Okay, yeah, you can. Discord's just being weird. Uh, all right, so thank you to Yoser for continuing their sub over on Twitch. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, becoming a Twitch sub or a YouTube member is actually really, really helpful. Uh, you all act essentially like a set of uh, sponsors and of yourself. So, oh, Cubby is here and I cannot hear. What's going on? I'm going to drop Discord really quickly. Hello. Okay. Now can you hear can... me? Yes, yeah. Discord was just being really weird. It wasn't sending stuff. Uh, go ahead. What were you saying, Cubby? Nothing. I was waiting for you. Okay. Uh, well, it looks like our caller's here. Caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Evil Trenton calling from Madison, Wisconsin. What do you want to talk about on the show? 
I want to talk about how TL will upset LNG and eventually match against Europe to get out of Swiss. Ooh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so TL is like the best lane swap team from the LCS. LPL and LCK haven't been in Europe for long. They haven't done any uh, solo queue in EU West. Um, the top seed or the higher seed gets side selection in the match. So in this case, TL gets to play blue side first. And then it's a toss up depending on meta read. Uh, but DL can adapt based on their LCS finals. They fight really well from behind as long as they pay attention to their minion waves. Um, and honestly, they're, they have the best hype video so far this world. Uh, and I'm really relying on Umpty to step it up. Thank you. I, we just got a giant drop of subs in the chat, but I will address that shortly. So, okay, so you're really relying on Umpty to step it up. Uh, I, yeah. I like this hopium. I had what we need to hear before the start of the of the matches. Cubby, how off base is this take or at all? Is it off base at all? Um I <laughs> I mean, I think that they can upset LNG again. Like I feel like that's a 50-50. But I mean, it's reasonable. I, I think that a part of the hope of actually making it out is that you're drawing some of the European teams instead of the, uh, you know, like Chinese and Korean teams, right? So I think it's reasonable. But yeah, I I, I mean, for me, I, again, my hope is that one Western team gets out. And whether it's TL or G2, I think the draw will affect that in some way, shape, or form. I just... I'm curious, like, which one it is. I, I, in, in this case, I think it's reasonable because it is assuming that TL gets a better draw. I, I think TL wants to find Fnatic later on in the tournament, right? Or you want to find Mad Lions later on in the tournament, if, if you have hope. Uh, so, uh, and it could very easily be, like, a TL or a FlyQuest versus G2 to the side who actually will make it into Swiss. So, I think this is somewhat reasonable, yeah? Okay, so somewhat reasonable. Uh, what do you think is... Hmm. Do you think the analysis of the LNG stuff is fair? I mean, LNG is just the biggest question mark, right? It, like, again, how did they actually practice with Yagao? Like, what kind of form is Scout in? Did his situation actually affect where he's at? I, I don't know any of this about LNG, right? And there's been no reporting on, on this either. So un, until, like, I hear a rumor or see how they play, I actually think, like, Jury's kind of out on LNG. My concern for LNG is that Gala is like really legit. Um, I I do think that the top side for TL can match or be better. I don't think this is the greatest patch on the planet for uh, Zika, and one of the greatest strengths that I had for TL is that Impact was willing to play a lot of answers and counters in the Cassante Renekton, who still appear to be the majority of the meta. And I think that that is a real strength for TL and a real strength for Impact. I'm just curious if he's whether to like. If he's able to pull that off on the international stage, because frankly, he was MVP because Impact was insane this split, but also the rest of his competition in top lane was pretty poor, if you think about LCS. Like, Whippo really did not show up until playoffs. He had a bad split. Um, Thanatos was good, but he had a lot of mistakes in mid to late game, and no one played swaps as well as TL because of how good Impact and Core JJ were in terms of just how they played it out. I don't think they're going to have the same advantages going into... Uh, some of the uh, Eastern teams. And that that is also something that needs to be answered for TL. My hope is that TL are able to still execute swaps, which very much are meta, and we're meta this entire time, and TL's smart enough to know that. It, also, it was a strength of theirs. And my hope is that they're able to find advantages maybe without just raw 2v2ing or 1v1ing these lanes, where uh, you are going up against the best players in the world who get access to better practice every day in solo queue, better ping, etc. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I do think Team Liquid is. I'm trying to. Say, I, I do think the Team Liquid is the strongest team we've sent to Worlds in years. Uh, it's hard to imagine when the last time was that we sent a team that was this good. It when, was what, 2016 TSM. I, no, that, that's no, been my answer the whole time. No. It, it was. It was Travis. What, what's been better since then? We've had good MSIs. I just don't. Worlds. That's I, not a good. It's been the most hope I've had. That's not a good sign. When you cite 2016 TSM. I know. Yeah, it's not good. I, don't, I think some of the, the Team Liquid, 
the like whenever they were doing the four peat thing, shouldn't some of those have been up there? Yeah, I yes, see some people but... saying that twenty twenty one or twenty twenty TL in the chat. The way they played, though, for me, I mean, I guess the making the finals at MSI, like maybe, but the way that they played, it was always they 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 didn't have like this super unique strength that TL is actually coming in with for this tournament, which is that legitimately teams were learning from them worldwide when it came to swaps. Yeah, that was when they were doing the whole like, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll just wait until our teams or our yes. opponents make a mistake and then we'll seize on it. And it's like, oh wait, you went yes. to worlds where nobody makes mistakes that much. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. That that that's that's my cope. So so the first time in eight years where we have a team that people should be this excited about. This is the most hope I've had for the region in eight years, by the way, with because uh, TL and Fly. I, I don't think we've sent two strongest, two teams stronger than this since 2016 or like 2014, legitimately. Yeah. Man, this 2014 be was crazy. still the best year. Yeah, it was still the best year. We had the best teams 2014. Like after that, every everyone, all the hope died pretty much. Okay. I'm going to do, uh, Numi, if you're here, can you do a poll in the chat to see if people agree that this is the strongest team since 2016? Ah, that's pretty hype. Uh, Collar, okay, so your take is that they can get out of Swiss, right, Collar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How far can they go after that? I think they can go all the way to semis. I, I genuinely believe that if they get a good matchup in quarters, they could make it to semis. Uh, but it's really hard to defeat the top three teams like Hanma Life, um, T1's always a dark horse, you have BLG and Genji, and I just think those three teams just have it on lock if um, they actually show up. Uh, but I think semis is probably the highest. Um, but I do think like TL, if they keep improving during the tournament, they could make it to finals uh, because they have really good adaptable players. And I think that's what we've been missing in the last eight years are players who really are not locked into one play style and do learn and grow as the seasons go on. Like, Thinking back to MSI, they have definitely made huge improvements in how they work together. Okay, so they can make it to finals. Can they win finals? At what point in time does you do you hit a wall that you can't get past anymore? Yeah, they they they, they, they can't make the finals, man. That's yeah. They, they they make it the quarters, and we all pray they draw someone reasonable. Okay, so they can make it to finals. Can they win finals? Caller. Uh, if they're against LPL, I think they can win. If they're against T1, then uh, plot armor. But uh, yeah, that's 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 my dream. Okay, the poll is up in Twitch chat for folks who want to vote in that. Uh, right now, it's sixty nine to thirty one. Uh, seeing more people vote. All right. Uh, no, this is fun. I like the hype. Anything that you want to shout out here at the end of the call? Uh, TL's video, Yapped in America, World's 2024 hype video, is probably the best content that a team has produced all year. It's, it's, um, it's really good. It's right now has like 30,000 views, and it's only been up 13 hours. Um, love that. Um, and shout out Price Picks, which made watching any final super interesting. APA and Umpty were playing with my heart, trying to not get more kills after the third game for some reason. Um, but yeah, Price Picks is, is definitely a game changer when it comes to watching LCS and hopefully Worlds. Yeah, nice. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying them. Uh, and yeah, appreciate you calling in. I I would say that maybe temper some of your Price Picks. <laughs> if if your take is that uh, Team Liquid could win Worlds, you know, maybe just be a little conservative with some of the plays that you make uh, with with the team as the as goes on, or maybe go harder. I don't know. Either way, thanks so much for the call, and we'll catch you next time. All right, we have one last call, but first, want to shout NZXT, folks. You got to get ready. You got to go over to NZXT. They're they've got amazing products uh, that are available. There's links in the description. There's links in the podcast description. There's links in the chat right now. Numi's calling them up right now. And when you do check out with an amazing new PC, you got to use code Travis Five. They've got uh, awesome stuff over there. It's not just PCs, by the way. Maybe you like to build your own. Go get some components from there. Maybe do an upgrade on your machine. Take a look at how beautiful these cases are that they have available. 
because that's going to be something I think you're going to be really excited about if you are somebody who wants to build your own. They make amazing hardware. They make amazing components. We really love working with NCXT. They're a great partner for the show, and they've been fantastic for us uh, over the course of the last, I think it's about four months or so that we've been working with them. Um, they've just been fantastic to work with. They've been wonderful partners and yeah, really enjoy having NZXT as partners for Hotline League. So if you could go check them out. Also, by the way, some folks uh, have been, when you use that code, it's very helpful. You want to use the link, it's very helpful. Um, but also some folks have just been tweeting things out or sharing in discords, et cetera. So if you do end up picking something up from them, that would be super great, especially because I know we're not too far off from like holiday sales and all that stuff as you start planning. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. And thank you so much to N6T for sponsoring the show. Did, did you mention hey, their yeah. giveaway, Travis? Um, they're doing a giveaway with FlyQuest, I believe, too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I know that they were doing yeah. one with me. I don't know if the FlyQuest one is still going, but folks should go check that out if uh if you oh want it's to. over sorry yeah but it's cool shout yeah. out nzxt They're i think awesome. i think we've yeah. shouted out the the one that they were doing previously but yes uh yeah really excited about uh about their partnership with flyquest as well but well they're here at worlds with two groups you know they're here at worlds with tgi they're here at worlds with flyquest all right we got pb doc here i believe that's you right pb doc i see the, yep. the icon where are you calling from baltimore maryland Baltimore, Maryland. I feel like your audio is better than it, it usually is. Thanks. <laughs> what do you What do you want to talk about on the like show? Was... What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, so my take is uh, that I th it's about the uh, power rankings, and that I think league should be using the power rankings in a college football playoff committee style way to see teams for worlds rather than a college basketball. Uh, NCAA selection committee style. Okay, can you explain what all this is? Because most yes, people, I knew you would ask. I know yeah. all about um, traditional sports, but some people might not. <laughs> so the TLDR is basically that college football uses a committee of essentially executives and professionals within each uh, sort of major conference um, that know a lot about football and uh, kind of come together as a committee that is supposed to be collectively independent and they rank people based on who is the best in the country. It doesn't matter which conference you play in, where you're from, they rank you based on, are you the best um, versus the college basketball NCAA selection committee? Um, they do a similar thing, but because there are more teams um, and more sort of uh, smaller mid major conferences, um, they often offer auto bids to, to at least one team from each mid major conference. Uh, which would be like a minor region equivalent in, in league, and then rank the at-large teams in the uh, bigger regions that are in the bigger conferences that don't actually win their conference title. Um, so, so I think that doing the, the power rankings, you know, you could kind of look at it one way, give, give all of the uh, regions an auto bid like they're doing now, or you could, you know, rank everybody and just take the top, say, 16, and, and that's it. Um, I think if you look at the, the posted rankings as are currently listed um, on well, esports.com, I think any, you know, it generally has five LCK teams, I think six LPL teams, and then you have your two um, LEC teams. Um, really, one, I'll, I'll say Fly is just sitting at 17, so just out. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, so you kind of have a, a pretty good mix of L LCK and LPL. I think they have it mostly right with the exception of I'd probably slide Fly and PSG from 17, 18 up to 15, 16 ahead of anyone's legend and uh, BDS. Um, and I think that that would just give people what they want in a world championship, which is to see the best teams around the world play, regardless of where you're from. Um, I think saving the midseason, what tournament, whatever they end up calling it, and the, and the first international tournament as sort of international make sure every region is, is sponsored and, and sort of covered. Um, I think I think you could save that, but I think for the world's um, tournament, it, it should really be the best of the best. Okay, so pretty much your, uh, the argument for this is to find a way to get teams that are not at Worlds, into Worlds. Like, for example, Ninjas in Pajamas are ranked 12. So, like, your Worlds would have these teams involved too. Yeah? 
Correct. I think, you know, anyone that watched LPL or LCK this year would really want to see JDG, Ninja, Ninjas in Pajamas, and uh, KT at Worlds. I mean, I think I would probably rather have them than some of the other teams that are there. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's just a matter of getting the, the best competition for a world cha- championship. I mean, I think if, if, and especially if you want to set the distinction for worlds over something like, you know, again, MSI or a third tournament and to say like, this is truly like the most prestigious tournament that there is period. This is the best of the best. Um, you know, you want the best teams. It doesn't matter where they're from. I, okay. I, I kind of, I can see your argument and I know that like Travis is, might get a little bit lost in like how it's used for traditional sports. Right. I think that no, it I'm is important definitely that- following along. I know exactly what he's talking about. All right, let's go. Um, I, I think that I can see this being used for maybe rounding out worlds, but I do think that you have to have every region have a spot in order to make just the regions work throughout the year, right? Uh, I mean, I think a cool, like, a cool thing would be is you'd have to have more tournaments that involve international teams to actually have this work. Like, that. that's first off. Like, that, that's the perk of, obviously... You know, college basketball is uh, you have a big schedule where you are going to play teams that are inside and outside of your conference throughout the season. And it's easier to gauge the power of everyone involved because there is more interplay, whereas everyone is siloed off in their own regions because it's a global sport. Right. Um, right. I can see this being used if they had more tournaments that involve the teams. Like unironically, EWC is great for something like this. Because it is another tournament where you get a lot of top teams that come. And that can change the ELO of not only the teams there, but also the regions, right? Uh, Like, if the third team of LPL goes and smokes everyone from LCK, then that's going to impact the entire region. Uh, Like, like when you go back, if you're going to have a global power ranking like this. Um, I, I, I would like it to round out a few spots. Like, if you had invite slots. And I think that could be actually the future of Worlds. Like, if you were to invite a few teams that missed and not just have it be, like, uh, the, the three, like you could decrease the amount of teams for all regions and then just like have invite slots kind of round things out and then get you to something like 20. I know it's going to be like 17 to 16 next year. Uh, but th- that would be something where I could see this being very useful and that would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah I think one of the, oh, sorry, I, I was just going to say, I think one of the like sort of downstream effects of doing it this way is that you would really to boost um, sort of the way that teams play within like the upper middle to mid of each of these regions you know you'd have a lot more people playing hungry to you know uh, stay at the top or get to the top rather than I think there are maybe in some of the larger regions especially there's sort of this understanding that like probably not going to beat Gen G we're probably not going to beat you know BLG and uh, you know probably not going to beat T1 and so you kind of get this, you know, idea that like if you're ninjas in pajamas or if you're, you know, if uh, you're KT, I mean, without a miracle run, you're probably not going to be making world most most uh, years. So I think it, I mean, it encourages sort of bringing up um, the middle of the regions and it, and it will probably do that worldwide also to have people, you know, in, in America's League, you know, you got to come in first basically if you want to be in, guaranteed to be in that top 16. And so you got to be hungry. I mean, I know they're already going to be hungry, but you can't be happy with second or third seed. Um, I think that that might be another downstream effect of that. What do you all make of these, the the new power ranking thing that they're doing? Uh, Because it sounds like this is not what we're talking about, right, Uh, Cubby? Um, Oh, just like the power ranking thing in general? Yeah, like just the way that because I don't know if you've read this like dev diary that they posted it with the global power yeah. ranking stuff. Uh, I haven't talked to people about like the ELO rating behind it. I don't really have an opinion on this. My thing is I think that it is healthy for the game to have something like this. And over time, it will self-correct and get to be more accurate. And any conversation around this is interesting. Uh, now, like this is what college sports do. And it matters a lot for them. And it will matter like later on in the year. It makes for interesting conversation. It adds more stakes to games. 
I'm a fan of this. This is something they should have introduced 10 years prior. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting to see the reception uh, to this and to also see how things uh, have changed. I, I'm curious to see how it how it continues to change over time. I mean, it is kind of cool that there's a, like, I don't know, some sort of central thesis for the power rankings of people yep. and you can like discuss or disagree with it or whatever. Um, I'm, I wonder if this gets more used by people. I, I do think that it's something where they need to kind of like have it on display uh, more often or bring it up often because it is linked off of the law esports website. Um, but I don't know how things will change uh, over time. Uh I mean, I think it's cool they introduced it before Worlds. I wish they would have introduced it like at the start of the year. I don't know when it was ready. Obviously, it's also a sponsor piece, right? Just given that it's the Amazon global power rankings. But again, if this continues to exist, like rankings like this are good and it will correct itself over time. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I like for me, there's just no downside to this. And anyone who is like tilted about, Oh, this team is ranked higher than this. Like, that's part of the fun of the rankings, right? So uh, I think that the system will get better over time. I, I mean, I think LCS is like underrated in, in the rankings. And I don't think there's a ton of bias behind that. If you look at the international performances this year, but it involves more than just this year. And a tournament like this, if I'm right, it'll like the LCS teams will win more and it will correct itself, right? So that yeah. that is interesting. Obviously, that thesis is not off to a good start, but you know we're hoping that the rest of the tournament things get better. So. <laughs> we we are definitely hoping that the rest yeah. of the tournament things get better. I agree with that. Uh, I also think you know we're talking about using it for invites so far, but I also think like you know the other half of it is using it for seeding. So I mean, I think you know if you just look at how the first round of Swiss was seeded, I mean, I think it creates some compelling closer matchups than probably should exist in the, in the first round. If you if you use the seeding. Yeah. 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 I think that would be a very fair way to use it too, to see the first round of Swiss, then just go from there. And I would actually thoroughly enjoy that. Or like MSI groups, you know, I would thoroughly enjoy that. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, uh, thank you so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out here at the end? Yeah. So since it was more of a T Sports call, I'll shout out um, RIP to Dikembe Mutombo and Pete Rose, um, two legends in their sports. I'll let you look up who they are, Travis. Um, so we can look up at their people I grew up watching, revering the sad day in sports and uh, RIP to them. And then um, shout out to everything going on in North Carolina um, with the uh, flood victims. Uh, donate to a cause if you if you have the opportunity and the uh, means to do so. Um, and yeah, yeah, enjoy the world's coverage. Thank you so much for the call. Really appreciate it. Always fun to get uh, in that cub you can get excited about. Uh, and we'll get <laughs> we'll get we'll get you next time. All right. Uh, so that Thanks. is the show, everyone. Uh, did want to give a big shout out to Xbix. Xbix. I don't know if you're still in the chat, but. Uh, thank you for gifting 20 subs. And then what's crazy is Twitch gifted 11 subs. So I think that what it does is when you gift more than five, Twitch just like rolls a dice to figure out how many to give out. Maybe it goes up based off of how many you're gifting. Cause I like Twitch gifted more than 50% of what Xbox did. So if anybody wants to roll the dice and see how many they get, it's kind of a cool thing they're doing, it looks like. Also, shout out to Dagami, who I miss, and Hashifoto and Haru for the subs as well. Uh, Cubby, what do you want to shout out? What do you want to plug here? Um, I will actually be doing VOD review uh, for, you know, games that are played later on. Um, shout out to the penguin for actually being a really good show that I'm actually enjoying. That's like, not just nerd them, you know, like actually a good show. Um, and shout out to you, Travis, uh, for scoring the Pagoda uh, sponsorship on top of our other sponsors in NZXT and prize picks. Prize picks has been a lot of fun for me, uh, to, you know, have a reason to actually, uh, you know, be more invested in the games. Uh, and yeah, shout out to a uh, hundred thieves. I know that they got a lot of flack and I know I was critical about how they played, but I still think they had a great year. And I am rooting for all the LCS teams as always. Uh, and I, I hope that they end up, uh, you know, looking back on this experience in a positive light 
and not just because of like you know after the kind of the community pullback blows over i wish that the games went better for them they did not deserve to be at the next stage of the tournament but uh still rooting for them as always my heart goes out to them because i know they took the loss pretty hard so yeah yeah uh yeah shout out for on my end shout out to uh price picks for getting me over here to berlin it has been a pretty exhausting first uh i guess it's been about 40 hours that i've been over here it's not even been two days yet but it's been good i was really excited to create content i have been told that today i will be getting access to both guma and faker for my quizzes mm -hmm. So we'll see what mood fakers that I've heard sometimes that he doesn't want to do like goofy quiz content, but uh, you know we'll see we'll see how that goes today. Uh, that's going to be in a little bit, so looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody for supporting my sponsors and for supporting me. Uh, I I love coming to Worlds. This is my twelfth Worlds, twelfth Worlds, I think. Does that make sense? Sheesh. Yeah, it does make sense. I'm at world's number 12. So I don't know. I just always really get excited to do this. It's fun to to watch the matches and to interview the players and create content with everybody and to uh, get to see friends who I also don't get to see. I'm going to hang out with Shox on, on Wednesday night. So uh, thanks, everyone, for supporting everything I do here. I'm going to stay on stream for a little bit after this. But yeah, thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll be back next week. I will say next week's Hotline League will probably not be on Monday because this time in a week, I think I'm headed to the airport. Um, so I don't think that I will be able to do the show at this time. So I think what we'll probably do is we'll just wait until I'm back in the U.S. and we'll do the show there. And that will also ensure that we have like better technical setups and we don't have like the, the audio stuff that we have going on here. So... Uh, stay tuned for next week's episode. It'll probably be on on Tuesday, or I think I'm hopeful. Probably Tuesday. Let's go with Tuesday. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll catch you next time.